Oh, hello there. Come along. Today, we're talking about carbon shoes. This is a carbon shoe. This is also a carbon shoe. This, however, is not a carbon shoe. Woo! So guys, the idea for this video sprouted recently after a conversation I had with my partner Courtney. Courtney has recently got into running in the last two or three months and has well and truly got the running bug just like I have and just like I'm sure a lot of you guys have. Courtney recently ran her first half marathon and is running almost every day at this point. She's really enjoying it, really enjoying getting her miles up. Courtney asked me recently, just after I finished my most recent marathon, the Melbourne Marathon, should I get a pair of carbon shoes? In particular, should I get myself a pair of the Night Vaporflies? And my honest answer to her was, it really depends. There's so much to take into consideration here before spending that money. Let's sit down, let's look at the options and have a think about it. It was during that conversation that I thought maybe some guys on YouTube would enjoy hearing about this. So here I am talking about carbon shoes. So to put it simply, would I recommend carbon shoes to everyone? No, I absolutely wouldn't. So let me explain my thoughts. And let's start off by clarifying exactly what a carbon shoe is. So carbon shoes at this moment in time haven't been around for very long. I've heard reports that people have been experimenting with carbon through the early 2000s, but really it was Nike with the Nike Vaporfly who just bought this whole new level to running shoe technology just a few years ago. So I have a few examples of carbon shoes here that I personally own and have enjoyed running in. Let's talk about the Nike Vaporfly as an example of a carbon shoe. So in this case, Nike have used a quite a thick layer of Zumex foam, which is quite a soft foam, quite cushioning on the foot. You can see that if I put pressure on my heel, I do actually compress that sole nicely. So running through the midsole of this shoe is a full length carbon plate. So essentially that carbon plate just adds a real stiffness to the shoe. So because of that stiffness, each time I pound on the pavement, that carbon plate compresses ever so slightly, compresses against the foam and gives me a spring off the ground. And then that spring poppy feeling, some people describe it as a snap, is really noticeable at higher speeds. So I personally find that anything around my half marathon pace and above, these shoes are super springy. So comparing a carbon shoe generally to an everyday shoe, my everyday shoe in this case being a Saucony Omni 19, I noticed that the carbon shoe is substantially lighter in weight, but there's sacrifices here. And although at this moment in time, the carbon shoe might sound like a great option, there's a few things to be aware of. So not unique to the Nike Vaporfly, but actually a characteristic of all of these carbon shoes I have here with me, including the Nike Alphafly 2, the Saucony Endorphin Pro 2. A shoe that I don't have here is the Nike Alphafly 1, but I've also run in a common characteristic of all of those shoes is quite frankly, they're not very stable. The Saucony admittedly is a little bit more stable than the Nike range, but quite simply, when I'm referring to stability, I'm talking about just how confident I feel landing with each foot strike in this shoe. So in contrast, my everyday runner, the Saucony Omni 19, when I'm running in that shoe, I feel confident with each stride that I take. I feel confident going around corners and I really do feel confident running and walking at all speeds in that shoe. I actually like to just wear my Saucony Omni 19s to the gym just while I'm doing strength workouts or even when I'm doing stretching, I find that they're a really nice stable shoe. Whereas if I compare that to when I've used any of the carbon shoes for racing in the past, I like to do my warm up in my super shoe, in my carbon shoe, just so that my feet, my ankles, etc., warm up in the shoe that I'll be using. And hence I know if my laces are too tight or anything for the race, which can often be the case. When I slow down to do a few walking dynamic stretches, or even when I'm just jogging slowly in my warm up in those super shoes, in those carbon shoes, I can really just feel that my feet, my ankle, and really the lower half of my leg is just a little bit wobbly and things are just a little bit unstable until I get to those higher speeds 
and then I just notice that that wobbling is actually it barely noticeable and in turn I'm just moving forward really nicely. But when I'm in races and there's corners to be taken sharply or a complete U-turn, which is often the case, I really do find that these shoes just suffer and it's actually really hard to turn and to keep up that agility that you may have. Another rather unfortunate characteristic of carbon shoes is that they just don't last very long. I've run a pair of like Vaporflies, in particular this blue pair, up to about 450 kilometers. And I will say that comparing this shoe that's probably a little bit past its expiry date to a much newer pair of Vaporflies, this pair have done about 50 kilometers. This shoe is just a whole different beast to this. They're exactly the same shoe just with about 400 kilometers difference. Now, I will say that I bought this shoe in the UK when it came out at retail price. I'll put that up on screen now. And I absolutely think that in my experience, this shoe has been worth the price. This was my first ever super shoe and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Whereas I bought this shoe secondhand on Facebook, very lightly worn for, whoops, for this price. And I absolutely think this shoe is worth that price. I'm not sure that I would pay that price for this shoe again, if I'm honest, at the same shoe. That's what I'm referring to here. But I'm not sure that I would pay that price for a pair of these shoes again. The sheer reason being is that I'm just getting lots of training in these days. This year so far, I run almost 2,500 kilometers. And if I was running just in carbon shoes, that would cost me way too much money. And there's no way that I'd be able to, to eat, let alone keep the lights on if I was just running in those shoes all the time. So compare that to a pair of daily trainer shoes like the Sacconi Omnis that I spoke about. And I can get upwards of about 900 kilometers in this shoe. I've actually run a previous pair of Sacconi Omnis up to about 700 kilometers. And honestly, the tread on the bottom of the sole is still intact almost 100%, there's just a light bit of wear. The only reason that I don't run in those shoes anymore is that I left them in the UK when I came to Australia, but there's no doubt that I would have actually been able to get another 100 or 200 Ks out of those shoes. And I bought those shoes for about 100 pounds in the UK. And I've since bought a pair of Sacconi Omnis for about $70 here in Australia, which is about 40 pounds. So really cheap for a long lasting durable shoe. Doesn't have a carbon plate, but actually I feel comfortable at a variety of different paces in that shoe and I know what I'm getting. So whilst researching for this video, I came across an article on the Run Repeat website where the Run Repeat folks did a study on carbon shoes and gave a, a few general figures of how the carbon shoes performed against non-carbon shoes. And the Run Repeat guys found that the carbon shoes in their study gave about three to 4% advantage in race times as opposed to the non-carbon shoes. Now this is a pretty well-known fact that the carbon shoes will, if used correctly, improve your running times. There's no doubt about this. And actually I have to say that in my own experience, I've absolutely loved using carbon shoes and I wouldn't change a thing. Particularly when it comes to my marathon efforts that I've done this year, as well as everything from the half, 10K, 5K distances. I've really enjoyed wearing the carbon shoes in them all. But I will say that now that I'm living here in Australia and I'm running more on different terrain, I've really started to question how much of a use do I have for carbon shoes in training? As I said, running on different terrains, the carbon shoes are pretty much exclusive for road use only. Again, this is a little bit of a disadvantage in my opinion. When I'm wearing my daily runners, I like to be able to run everywhere, up and down hills, on the sand, on the beach, around tight corners, on different cambers. I need to be able to feel sturdy, secure and confident wherever I'm running. Whereas if I take my carbon shoes out and run into a bit of unexpected sand, or unexpected trails that are a bit, a few branches lying around or a few potholes, I'm not gonna to feel too comfortable. Again, a bit of a disadvantage in my mind, I think. So whether you're looking to buy your new pair of carbon shoes, or if like me, you've had a few pairs and you're looking to buy another, I think it's really worth taking a moment to just think about the money that you're gonna spend. Now, I personally like to live on a bit of a budget and I like to scrape the pennies together. And I find that actually, when it comes to buying new running shoes, I really do like to compare the market. And I have to say that buying and running in the new Nike Alpha Fly 2s, I do feel 
that these guys are a massive improvement on the Alpha Fly 1s. I was fortunate to get some discount on these shoes through my running club. I'm not sure that I would have bought these shoes for retail had I not had that discount. But I will say that personally, with the amount of time that I put into my marathon training, as well as just how much better I feel I recover when I'm using the Nike Alpha Fly in this case, I really think it was worth the money for me. But would I recommend a shoe like this that I think retails for about £270 in the UK? Would I recommend a shoe like this to someone who's looking to go quicker in their park run um, and isn't running much over the 10k distance? No, I wouldn't. In fact, I would say to that person that actually you're much better off buying a nice rotation of shoes to do your training in. So buy a dedicated pair of mileage shoes. In my case, I love to use the Ciccone Omni series, but you might also like to use the Nike Invincibles or you know even something like the New Balance 1080. Get yourself a nice solid running shoe, maybe even get an older model. You'll probably find it in the sale somewhere for about half the price of the brand new version of that shoe. And you probably will notice there's not much difference and actually you might even prefer it to the new version of the shoe. And then with that money you've saved, go and buy another pair of shoes. And maybe this is your speed shoe, or maybe this is a shoe that you wear outside when it's raining or you wear on the trails. But just by building up a bit of a shoe rotation, you're actually teaching your feet to run in different conditions. You're adding strength to your ankles and your joints and all those supportive muscles throughout your lower limbs. And you're showing your body a new way of running. And I do think that this variation will in turn lead to you being more motivated in the long run, but it'll also just add a nice bit of variety to your workouts, giving yourself a more rounded picture of running. And I think this is really important, at least in my own experience. And at this point, if you've bought two pairs of shoes in the sale, it's likely that you haven't even gotten near to buying a brand new pair of carbon shoes, especially the Nike ones. With that money you've saved, you can probably afford to get yourself some supplements. Now, I wouldn't recommend supplements to everyone, but personally, I find that having a recovery drink straight after my workout, in my case, I use a vegan protein powder. That does absolute wonders for my recovery. I like to use hydration tablets, so electrolytes from the likes of SIS, Bix Hydration, Goo, High Five, any of these electrolyte drinks will really just help you to recover. Also, stock up on vitamins. At the moment, I'm taking calcium, vitamin D, vitamin C, and magnesium every morning. And by no means are they cheap vitamins, but actually it's so worthwhile investing in my health in the long run. I haven't been ill in about four months. And actually before I was taking these vitamins, my sleep was definitely suffering. My recovery wasn't anywhere near as good as it is now. And actually I was getting sick quite often. So for the sake of 20 or 30 pounds a month, it will really be worth stocking up on vitamins. And now we're probably getting close to the cost of a super shoe. And even if you just got 10 or 20 pounds laying around now, bank it and put that in a running fund because just the nature of running, we do run through shoes quite quickly, especially if you're putting in the high miles. And we're also using a lot of energy. So think about how you can put that money into a fund, maybe to buy some Morton gels down the line if you get into longer distance running, or even just to buy yourself some really good running socks, because honestly, it goes such a long way to wear some decent socks. Another thing to consider if you don't need new running shoes, if like me, you've got a bit of a shoe rotation going, a bit of a collection, and you're thinking about buying a new pair of Carmen shoes, just think, hang on, you're only gonna get 400 Ks out of that pair of shoes. That might only be a few months of training. Would you be better off spending that money just going on a little trip? Maybe instead of running in the new Carbon shoes, you can go on a run on a beach somewhere. And wow, that sounds good, doesn't it? That's your thing, it's mine. But I know for myself that I would much rather have that time off work, two or three days, go and run on a beach. Come on, it doesn't get better than that. But guys, I hope that you've taken something away from this video. I hope there's a bit of food for thought for you there. And guys, if you have any thoughts on the matter, I would love to hear them. Please leave your thoughts down in the comments below. But as always guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I will be wearing my non-carbon running shoes for the rest of the day. I think I'm gonna take London for a little walk now. But fine gratitude, fine peace, and I'll see you all very soon. Thanks guys.